Okay, now we're going to look at is the case of a flat, flat reflecting surface. So let's assume we have something. Here's a flat surface. So the typical, oops, that's not quite flat, is it? Okay. So let's say this is air and this is water. So if we were to draw a ray coming in to the surface, the question is actually, we want to go the other direction. So let me, so we're going to have an object down here somewhere. I'm just going to put it as a point. So there's a point, something on the bottom of the pool, something floating in the pool. So the or a light from that thing comes out and it hits the surface. And so if we draw a perpendicular line to that surface like this, and then we extend it both directions, oops, wrong thing, like that. So this angle is our angle theta sub a. And because we're going from a index of refraction, a higher index of refraction, to a index of refraction that's lower, instead of bending towards the surface, it's going to bend, well, instead of bending um, towards the line perpendicular, it's going to bend away like that. So then we have theta 2 right here, theta 2. Now let's just do one more. So if we have a, another ray coming up here, it's going to look like that. If we draw a line perpendicular to the surface here, like that. Okay, so it's perpendicular. Then we extend it down. And what will happen is this ray will, instead of going straight, like that, it will bend somewhat like that. Now, if you're sitting out here and you have your eye, there's the eye looking. What it's going to see is actually as if the lines, if you took these lines back and found the point of intersection of them. So this one would extend back like that because the eye thinks that the eye doesn't know these things are refracting. It just sees rays coming out and it thinks that's happening. The same way here, this one goes straight like that. And actually, uh, they should, if I did, had drawn these correctly, they would uh, meet a different place. They would actually meet straight above here. So, I'm, of course, I'm just pulling these angles uh, out of my, you know what, so um, let's just pick some point here. Oh, wait, I should have put a point right there. So. Um, what I want this one to do is kind of come through like this, like that, and then this one would probably come through like that. Okay, so they intersect some close point. And so when you're outside, instead of thinking that the object is this deep, your eye thinks it is that deep. It looks like it's closer to the surface. So that's kind of how the way it works, and you can, one way to do it is to take the previous uh, equation that we had for a spherical mirror and just let r go to infinity. So we had this equation n1 over p plus n2 over q is equal to n2 minus n1 over r. So if we let r go to infinity, this term goes to zero, and so we get n1 over p is equal to negative n2 over q. Or you can say that q is equal to negative n2 over n1 times p. Now, which one is n2 and n1? Well, in this case, this would be n2, this would be n1. Uh, and of course, n1 is greater than n2. Well, it wouldn't work out that way. So this is the uh, distance to the object. So if we 
were to draw. Let me just get rid of some of these rays. Let me just see what we're talking about. So we get rid of everything except the dot there, basically. So what we're talking about here is that this distance from the interface to the surface, from the pardon me, the surface to the object is P. So this is my object. What's going to happen is you're going to have a smaller distance Q, which is here. And this is going to be shorter. That's why it looks like it's not as shallow. That's Q. Now if we go back, if we went back to the circular um, lens, we would find out that Q is on one side of the lens and P is on the other side of the lens. So the negative sign means they're actually on the same side of the lens. So this this formula was derived assuming these are both positive and they were one was on the object was on one side of the lens and Q was on the other side of the lens. In this case, because there's a negative sign, Q is um, Q is on the same side. And notice that uh, it says the object, well, this isn't about inversion. This is just about where the object is relative to the image. And you can see that if N2 is less than N1, then you looks like Q, Q is going to be smaller than P. It looks closer. OK, so that's pretty much it for um, cases of a flat surface. So it's, kind of it's kind of interesting that, you know, under what conditions, is, are there some radiuses where you still have this happen? I guess it would depend upon um, the value of R relative to P and Q. I just think what I'm thinking is, you know, here we have the image and the object on the same side. Um, is there a case where we have we have some curvature, but it's not enough, and and you're uh, such that they still are on the same side. So I'm just thinking about that. Let's let's just what we're looking at is n1 over p plus n2 over q. We looked at the case where it was zero, but is there a k? Are the values of n1 and n2 so that this Works out. So how does how do we how do we think about that? Um, well, it's probably some point this well you can't really let it go to zero because uh, I was just thinking if, it, if if you had it a case where you know here's the interface. And a normal thing, you have P is over here and Q is over there. And the question is, could you have it where it goes to zero? And I don't think so, because you'd be dividing by Q. I don't think that would work. So I'm going to pause it for just a second think about this. So let me just pause it and I'll be back and give you an update. Okay, well, I've thought about it, and I don't have an answer right at this point. So I'll think about it some more, and I'll do a separate video if I've come up with some ideas worth sharing.